This video will illustrate how we use the P4 data plane programming language to export information directly from networking devices. This video does assume a basic working knowledge of the language itself. If you're not already familiar with the P4 language, or you aren't familiar with the way that the compiler automatically generates the APIs to push state into the forwarding plane, you should take a look at www.p4.org and see the short introductory video that will give you the background you need. You can also get the most recent version of the full P4 language specification, which describes the language in detail. P4 is a domain-specific language that was designed to express flexible data planes. Among other things, it has primitives to insert, remove, and modify packet headers, functions for bit and byte field manipulation, and user-defined packet header parsing, table lookups, and action processing. We'll use some of these primitives in a demonstration today, where we extract and export network telemetry information directly from the data plane. Our demonstration today will talk about how we can use the P4 language to solve some common but relatively difficult network problems. We've named the tools and concepts to do this in-band network telemetry, or just INT for short. In its most general form, INT is really about using a programmable data plane to directly observe, report, and react to events that are happening within the network. The key differences between INT and more traditional NMS concepts are that INT operates almost entirely within the data plane, allowing us to do things at data rates and packet rates that can't be achieved if we have to go out to the host CPU or operating system. Also important is the idea that INT is something we can modify over time. It's not prescriptive as to exactly what information is being collected or exported, and the authors are easily able to select what export packet format or data stream makes the most sense for their requirements. Ultimately, the flexibility of the P4 language and the compiler target capabilities will allow users to define what information they're interested in, at what granularity they need to monitor that information, and then write programs in P4 that can collect and report on that data. Our example network today is built using the Mininet environment. If you're not already familiar with Mininet, it's a fantastic tool for building and testing simulated network environments. You can go to www.mininet.org and find out lots of information there. The topology we're using here today consists of three P4 devices and three emulated Linux hosts. The switches are the three green boxes in the diagram, and the hosts are the smaller blue ovals. You can see that we've also assigned bandwidths to each of the links between these devices. Mininet handles the scheduling, queuing, and packet delivery based on these configured bandwidth values. Each emulated host is a separate Linux network namespace, which essentially functions as a lightweight virtual machine in this environment. To get started with our demonstration, we'll run a Python script that launches the Mininet environment, then starts a process for each of the switches and each of the hosts. We also have a small app that visualizes the network with the devices and links color-coded. If we zoom into the visualizer, we can see that each link in the Mininet environment is color-coded and numerically tagged according to the amount of traffic that is passing through that link. So far, this looks just like most network management applications and heat maps have looked for the last 30 years, but there's an important difference. Traditionally, this type of application has used a client server or a pool model based on SNMP to constantly query the network devices and collect information from them. This has worked well enough up to a point, but modern devices continue to increase in interface density, bandwidth, and the number and complexity of available statistics. Additionally, the interval at which network operators need to collect information is shrinking, meaning we want to collect more and more information faster and faster. Even today, the overhead of going through the network operating system stack to collect this information has become a major bottleneck, and this issue shows no signs whatsoever of going away. Using a mechanism like INT allows the data plane of the devices to much more efficiently push the relevant information about the devices directly out of the forwarding plane. Using this publish-subscribe model allows us to bypass the host CPU and operating system for our most common telemetry tasks. This in turn reduces the amount of software processing required, freeing those resources for other tasks, as well as resulting in an orders of magnitude improvement in how frequently we can export data from the network devices. To build this dynamic utilization chart, we take packets that are already flowing through the switches, and as they pass through these devices, we use a few lines of P4 to extract the link utilization from that particular switch, and then encode that information directly into the packet. In our particular example, we happen to know that the underlying packets are all TCP based, so instead of creating an entirely new packet format, we just insert a new TCP option header into the existing frames as they pass through. We're essentially piggybacking the telemetry data into the barrier traffic. 
Of course, this is just an example. You could just as easily build a totally new packet format dedicated to telemetry export, or insert a header with a customized format into the data frames. This flexibility in defining packet formats and selecting the data relevant to a specific use case is a major motivator for the P4 language. In our example, we just use the TCP options header format because it's well known, it's easy for tools like Wireshark to parse, and it's transparent to the lower level transport protocols. This last bit can be important depending on the use case. There can be situations where the end stations are aware of P4 telemetry headers, but the internal transport devices are not. Using an embedded header here allows those packets to transparently pass through intermediate devices. As the packets flow through the network, the switches insert their link utilization data as well as the switch identifier into the INT headers. When the packets arrive at the end host, this information is parsed out by the analysis process, which updates the colors and values shown on the visualizer application. For the purposes of this troubleshooting demo, we've created a scenario that is fairly typical for large network operators. An application or customer is reporting intermittent latency problems across the network. These types of problems are typically very painful because they come and go quickly as the network conditions change and can't easily be reproduced on demand. In our scenario, we've set up a very simple visualizer that issues a periodic HTTP request from host 3 to a server process on host 1 and then plots the amount of time it took for that response to come back from the server. In order to disturb the normal operation of our simulated environment and create an actual problem to track down, we've created a periodic burst of traffic between host 2 and 3 that will congest that part of the network. If you watch the heat map, you can see the path between host 2 and host 3 periodically change color as these traffic bursts occur. You can see here that in our plotted results, the application performs well most of the time, but there are occasions when it takes much longer than normal for the web page to return. This is the classic long-tail network problem, where an infrequent but recurring problem keeps popping up. To help troubleshoot this, we're going to use the capabilities of P4 to implement an in-band data plane telemetry solution. Our open source switch program has the ability to provide the amount of time a packet has spent within the queuing system. This is presented in P4 as one of the intrinsic metadata fields. By plotting and analyzing this packet level delay information, we can identify when congestion is occurring directly in the data plane without having to have a local CPU constantly pull for that information. We then encode this queuing delay into a modified TCP options header where the end station can parse and analyze. If we take a look at the P4 actions used to implement this, it's only a few additional lines of code. The add header action inserts a new INT header which has four defined fields, the kind, the length, the switch ID, and the measured latency for that particular packet. The four modify field actions simply copy the relevant information either from defined constants in the code or out of the switch metadata and into the new TCP option header. Finally, we just have to adjust the TCP offset and length fields based on the header we've inserted. Once this header is populated, the telemetry information is just carried along with the data packet to the destination, where another visualizer process parses this information out and refreshes the data plot. In our other visualizer applet, we use the in-band telemetry information to build a scatter plot of the queuing delays for each switch. The result is the plot that you see here. We've color-coded these devices to make it easier to determine which device is suffering from the queue buildup. Each packet is represented by a dot, and it's clear that the majority of the packets are delayed only a few milliseconds, which in our mini-net topology is just a couple of packet times. But if we watch for a moment, we can see outliers in the data. These dots represent packets that are spending a very long time in the queues of the blue device, switch number three. Obviously, we built this environment specifically to show the problem, so we already knew that this is the congested device. But if we were troubleshooting this in a live network, there could easily be dozens or hundreds of devices, and each one of them could potentially be a congestion point. Having the ability to very quickly determine which device is introducing the delay can dramatically reduce the time it takes to identify the root cause of a network problem. Plus, the ability to do the first order analysis and filtering right in the data plane provides a major improvement in scale over designs that use SNMP and require constant CPU polling and collection. That's all we have for today. Thanks for spending a few minutes of your day with us here at p4.org. Hopefully this short demonstration gave you a rough idea of the capabilities of P4 when it comes to collecting and exporting information from networking devices. If you're interested in writing your own P4 code or learning more about the language, there are open source compilers and tools available on GitHub, as well as a number of mailing lists where you can correspond with the P4 community and get answers to questions. You can find all of these resources on the P4 webpage at www.p4.org.